Laura Branigan was an iconic American singer and songwriter whose powerful vocals and captivating stage presence made her a beloved figure in the 1980s music scene. Right now, you have the opportunity to dive into the life and career of this remarkable singer to uncover important facts and insights about her journey in the music industry. From her chart-topping hits to her incredible vocal range, every detail provides an amazing and comprehensive insight into Laura Branigan's talent and impact on the music world. Whether you are a longtime fan or just getting familiar with her music, this video is sure to amaze you. Brannigan was born in 1952 in the upstate New York town of Brewster. It wasn't until her senior year in high school that she considered pursuing a musical career after landing the lead role in a school musical. By the mid-70s, Brannigan had been accepted at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City, and in the latter part of the decade she auditioned to be a backing vocalist for Leonard Cohen. She won an audition and spent the remainder of the decade touring the world with him. As a result, she landed a recording contract with Atlantic, but work on her solo debut was held up by a breach of contract lawsuit that resulted from her changing her management. All issues were eventually sorted out by 1981 and Brannigan launched her solo singing career with her debut, Brannigan, in 1982. The album spawned one of the year's top pop hits, The Donna Summer Like Gloria, a remake of an Italian pop song from the 70s that peaked at number 6 in the UK and number 2 in the US. The song also earned Brannigan her first of four subsequent Grammy nominations for Best Pop Vocal Performance, Female. The song's popularity reached massive proportions in other parts of the world, especially Germany, where it hit the number one position and spurred renewed interest in the original Italian version that reached the number two slot. Released in 1983, Brannigan 2 spawned another two US hit singles with Solitaire and How Am I Supposed to Live Without You, the latter of which was co-written by Michael Bolton. The year 1984, while she was working with German producer Jack White, was the height of the European synth-pop era and Self Control, the title track of Brannigan's third album. Released in April 1984 became her biggest hit internationally, topping the charts in over six countries, most notably West Germany, where it spent six weeks at number one. The original version was recorded a few months earlier, still in 1984, under the name of one of the song's co-writers Raff and held the West German number no. 2 spot during this time period. Brennigan's version enjoyed more success outside of Raff's native Italy, hitting number 4 in the US. The song was featured on the 8th episode of the first season of the TV series, Miami Vice, entitled The Great McCarthy, which aired on November 16, 1984. Other pop, disco, and adult contemporary hits from the Self Control album include The Lucky One, which won her a Tokyo Music Festival prize, the Continental Ballad T. Amo, and the dance hit Satisfaction. By the time Brannigan's fourth album, Hold Me, was released in July 1985, Self Control was a worldwide success. The hits continued with Spanish Eddie, which was her sixth U.S. Billboard Top 40 pop hit in two and a half years. The subsequent single release, Hold Me, was a U.S. Top 40 dance hit. But, by the dawn of the 90s, the hits had dried up for Brannigan, and such albums as 1990's self-titled release and her final album, 1993's Over My Heart, which she co-produced with Phil Ramone, went all but completely unnoticed. In 1994, Brannigan duet with David Hasselhoff on the track I Believe for the Baywatch soundtrack, and a year later the singer's first hits compilation, the 13-track The Best of Brannigan, appeared and included two newly recorded covers, Maria McKee's Show Me Heaven and the Donna Summer hit Dim All the Lights, the latter was also subsequently released various times in remixed form. In addition to issuing albums, Brannigan continued to act and perform concerts in Europe and Asia. In 1994, Brannigan's husband, Larry Krutik, was diagnosed with colon cancer. She refused to accept a medical prognosis and left music behind to care for him. 
Brannigan put Krutek on herbal treatments and, as his condition deteriorated, she eventually cared for him full-time. He passed away on June 15, 1996 in New York. In 2001, a second hits collection, The Essentials, was released and included the often requested yet long out-of-print hit, I Found Someone. Brannigan returned to the public stage in 2002, earning rave reviews for her brief portrayal of Janis Joplin in Love, Janis. On August 26, 2004, Laura Brannigan suffered a brain aneurysm and died in her sleep. Laura Brannigan was undeniably a talented and remarkable artist whose impact on the music industry continues to be felt even after her passing. Her powerful vocals and captivating performances left a lasting impression on fans around the world. From her chart-topping hits to her unforgettable rendition of Gloria, Laura Brannigan's musical legacy will forever live on. As we reflect on her incredible journey and the extraordinary talent she possessed, we are reminded of just how special she was. Through her music, she touched the hearts of millions and solidified her place as one of the most iconic singers of her time. Laura Brannigan may no longer be with us, but her music will forever be a source of inspiration and joy.